We're going to be building out a register form today, and we're going to be calling a register mutation, which we have on our server when the user submits that form. Now, usually when I build out forms in React, I like to use Formic, but I thought it'd be fun to try out a new library, that being React Final Form. So I was actually giving it a try today and seeing what it was like. And actually, it has a kind of a similar API to Formic, but it looks like it has almost more functionality or capability down the line for kind of advanced use cases, which was kind of interesting. But when I gave it a try, it didn't look like it had very good TypeScript definitions, or at least they were kind of like half there. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole of trying to see if how or if there was a way to get better TypeScript support with React Final Form. And it looked like there's this library called Define Form that you can use to kind of get a uh, strongly typed form in Final Form. But it doesn't look like many people use it, and it seems like it hasn't been updated in a while. So I was skeptical to use it. Um, and so for the time being, maybe I'm missing something. I'm not going to go with React Final Form in this video. Uh, maybe I'll come back to it in a little bit. Um, but the API is so similar to Formic, I kind of just want to choose Formic to make forms right now. Uh, and when they get better TypeScript support, I may give them a try again. So anyway, in this video, we're going to be using Formic. But do let me know if I miss something. And Final Form actually does have some TypeScript definitions that cover everything. So we're going to be adding a new page to our website. So to do that, we're going to be adding a... Uh, new file under the pages folder. So I'm going to call it to register and whatever I name the file here, that is going to be the path. So I called it register. So now when we go to slash register, it's going to render whatever we, whatever we have here. So we're going to import react and it's going to be from react and we're just going to say export default and we're going to export default just a functional component. And we're going to say return. And here I'm going to say register form. So I just want to, I have my uh, compiler running or I have the server for Next.js running. Uh, and I just add this. So now I want to go to slash register and make sure it is working. I can see the register form there. Awesome. Now, one thing that uh, came with the sample that we download or the boilerplate uh, with Next.js is this layout component. So if we look at this layout component, it comes with a few things. It has a head tag in here, and we can actually pass the title as a parameter. And what this will do is this will affect the title in the browser. It also has a little header with links and a footer. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this layout in our component over here. So I'm gonna wrap this with a div, or not with a div, with the layout component. And I'm just going to name this title is going to be register page. And we'll call all that capital. And let's wrap this with parentheses. So now you'll notice up here, this is where that title pops up. And now we can see we kind of have a stuff here and a footer at the bottom. So if I go to the home page, we can see it'll change what page, uh, depending on what page you're on, you can actually update that. All right, so back to register, we have kind of the layout, we have the page we wanna put on. Let's go ahead and get started with our form. So we're going to start by installing Formic. Yarn add Formic. And then after this is done, we're going to import Formic and just wrap the page. Uh, I'm gonna just restart the server while this is going. Oops. Yarn start is when you build it, I'm gonna do yarn dev to run in development. All right, so I'm gonna say Formic here, and now I can have Formic just wrap the outermost, or I can have it wrap inside. I don't think I need to re-render the layout every single time we have a, a form change, so I'm gonna wrap the inside here. All right, so I'm gonna, this is going to be, actually, I'm gonna do this in a different way. So usually when I'm doing uh, properties or components that are rendered props, I have a technique to wrap code that's already there. So what I've been doing lately is this, is I'll write formic, and then I'll write out the entire rendered prop, right? And then what I'll do is I'll just take this right half here and paste it underneath. So that's kind of how I've been wrapping stuff with rendered props lately, and it's been working pretty well. All right, so let's uh, import this. We're not getting any auto completion right now, so we'll just write it ourselves. 
and we'll get formic. Give that a save. All right, so a few things that we need to add here. We're gonna say initial values, um, and this is going to specify uh, what values are gonna be in our form and the initial ones for them. Now for us, I went to GraphQL Playground, and that's at localhost 4000 slash GraphQL, so this is where our server is running. And I went to our schema, and we can see what types that we need to post or send to this. So we need a first name, last name, email, um, and we don't need name. We need to go to register input. Uh, we can see password and email. All right, so we're going to say email, first name, last name, and then password. So cool update to Formic. Usually we have to pass in a generic right here to be able to get the type definitions for this, but we no longer need to do that. It'll actually inference it by what we put in our initial props, or sorry, our initial values. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we do have to add an on submit. So on submit, I'm just gonna pass it a just regular uh, function or blank function for now, and we'll come in and fill that in a second. So now when I say values, um, I can display the values here. So for example, values dot email and notice it uh, auto completes for me so it inferred these uh, fields that we have because of our initial values that we set here so that's pretty cool all right so the first step when doing formic is you usually create a form so let's go ahead and create a form component or a form tag or use the form tag i mean so we're going to say on submit and formic's going to handle this for us and they have a handle submit function that we pass in. And then after that, we're gonna pass in a whole bunch of fields. Now you may be used to doing uh, inputs like this. And then if you uh, have used Formic way down the line, you used to just pass in the values into inputs, but now you can kind of create field components and then reuse them, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna do that. So to do that, I usually like to create a custom component for this. So I'm going to create a, a folder inside of components up here, which I'm just going to call uh, fields. Inside of fields, I'm going to say, uh, I'll call it input field dot ts, dot tsx actually. So I'm going to say export const input field, and this is going to be a function. Now, what am I actually going to put inside of this? Well, this is where I'm gonna put the actual input field. So maybe I wanna label, maybe I wanna display errors, maybe I wanna display also the input field itself. Now for this, I'm not actually gonna do any styling. I'm just gonna do a blank input field, uh, but you can take this and add any kind of CSS you want to this guy to make him pretty. Um, now to actually get the types working, let's make sure we import uh, React. And right here, we're gonna get some props. It's gonna be field props. And I believe if, we, if you uh, hit Control or Command on a Mac and you click on this, you can see what the type definitions are. You can see we can pass in a generic uh, to this uh, using the angle brackets. Um, and we can see what value this affects. And this just affects the form values, which is kind of lackluster, uninteresting. So we're just gonna do that. We don't really care about that. So this will give us access to a field in a form. Um, and what, why do we care about this? Um, if we say field dot, we can see the different properties on it. Um, those are all the properties really that we wanna pass to an input. So we're gonna say dash dash or dot 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 field here. And then we don't actually need anything from form, I don't think, uh, but you can see we have access to some different values. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna do some error handling. So we will actually access the errors, but for now, no need for them. Um, and then we may want to pass some other props just to our inputs. So we're going to say dot, dot, dot props. And we're just going to spread it on here, dot, dot, dot props. Um, and so I'm going to say form. So like, so when I did this, it's complaining. We can see that here. If I hover over it, it says it's not assignable. Uh, this, this object is not assignable to the type right here. So this is the type that it is expected us to pass to inputs like this. So I just copied it to my clipboard. So it's expecting this. Um, so I could call this input props, input props is this, and I could import this and import this. 
And these are the props that the input uh, expects and I can add them up here. So we can say and input props. Um, and so now it's happy with the props that we're passing in here. I can also extract the form one if we don't wanna pass the form inside of this. Anyway, what this will do now is we have uh, type definitions for this input field if we want to. So if I render an input field, I can now pass all the things I would a input uh, here. So for example, name, maybe placeholder, we wanna pass in that sort of thing. Okay, so now that I created this kind of input field, I can use it for all my fields. So I can say field and we give it a name. So for example, email. Um, and then here I can say the component that we're going to pass in. Uh, and the component is that special thing we just created. So that's gonna be the input field, what it looks like. And import is, or sorry, this field component is coming from Formic. All right, so let's get rid of this, give it a save, and let's just see where we are so far. So uh, if we come back over here, you'll notice here's a field. And if I type stuff, right, we can see it show up there. Um, so, so far we just have a basic input field that we represented. And again, I could style this if I wanted it any way. For example, make the text red. Now, obviously you wouldn't do this, but this is just an example that you can then reuse this across multiple components, which we're gonna do. So now we have an email. We want the first name. And I'm gonna put that up here. We also want the last name. Um, and we also want the password. Now I didn't add placeholders to any of these. That would probably be a good idea. Placeholder, first name. And let's do that to the last name, into the email, into the password. And so last name, email, and then password. Okay. The other thing about the password field here is we wanna say type password. And that way it is hidden when the user types. Uh, and if I come back over here, we don't need to worry about having a red input field. All right, so now we have all our fields here. Uh, we could wrap this in a div if we wanted them to drop to new lines. Um, and so we have a little form now. Okay. Last part is I want to add a submit button. We're gonna say button submit and we just have to set this to the type submit. And again, we could uh, actually put more than this and style it, but uh, we can just have at least you need to provide that submit so when the user clicks on it, it will uh, trigger the form submit. All right, so now uh, we can just put our values here um, or we can just call it data if we wanted to and I can console log that. So now when I fill out the form and hit submit, we should see it in the logs. Uh, so bam, bam, bam. Hit submit. I see what I typed in here uh, in the fields. And it looks like, did I put first name, last name, email, email? Yep. Uh, so I got a little thrown off. I thought I messed something up, but I actually just typed almost the same word multiple times. So one, two, three, four. I can submit that and that'll be really clear. All right, yeah, we got everything working. Cool. All right, so now when I hit the submit button, instead of just logging, I actually wanna call a mutation. So let's do that real quick. We're gonna head over to our mutations and we're gonna create a new one called register. And now that we have this all set up, it's gonna be pretty fast and easy to do. So I'm just copying this, but we don't really have to copy it because there's not really a lot we need to, to carry over. We're really just copying the import statement at the top. We're gonna rename this to a register mutation and then we're gonna get rid of what's inside of here. And basically, we're just going to replace it with the register query. I already rewrote this out, so you can just do what I did here. Uh, so we're calling the register mutation. I named it register here. We're going to be just passing a single variable called data, and that is going to have the register input field type. Um, and then this is what we're going to expect back from the mutation. All right, so back over here, uh, we want to be able to use one of those components. So I made a change to the folder over here, I add a mutation. So we just need to regenerate. And I'll restart, oops, we don't need a gen again. Restart that. Now if I come to my components, 
Where did I put it? Uh, generated Apollo components. Hopefully we have a register component in here now. And we do. So we can now use this uh, in our, our thing over here. So I'm going to say register component. And again, I'm going to make this render prop in the same way. Copy the right side, paste it over here. Um, and then here, this is going to be the mutation to call. So it's going to be the register mutation. And we're going to say register, pass in the variables. Um, and we can see the data. We can see all the values it expects. We're going to just pass in the data that we get from our form. And then we're just going to wait this, make this an async function. And then we're going to log the response. Give that a save. And now let's try submitting this guy. Uh, if I come back over here, if I refresh, oh, did I mess something up? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. Let's just click on this again. Yeah, OK. Sometimes I get little errors like that. Usually it's from hot module reloading. And if I refresh the page or restart the Next.js server, it's good to go. All right, so first name, uh, his first name is going to be one, two. Email is going to be test at test.com and just a random password. All right, let's submit this. Um, there we go. It took a second. And now we can see data back. You can see an ID of seven. I guess I've created like seven users. Um, so that is how we do the register submit. Now, if you actually go back over to your server logs, uh, you'll actually see a register or a confirmation email being sent to that user. And you can click on this URL um, and then actually confirm it if you wanted to. Uh, we ha well, well con I say confirm it, but really it's just going to take you to uh, this website and it's going to show you nothing. But anyway, we're going to be dealing with that in a future video. Um, that's pretty much it for now.